WKTT, because democracy is worth suppressing rights for. WKTT 1066. Celebrities are what matters in America, and we watch their every move. It's time for Fizz. It's Fizz time, everybody. The celebrity show that puts the lobotomy back on the cultural agenda. I'm Jane Labrador, and I'm joined as ever by Marcel Lemieux and Jeffron James. And boy, have we got a freshly stuffed show for you today. That's right. Lie on your stomach and bite your pillow, America. Let's find out what's happening in this crazy world of unceasing celebrity banality. Let's get down and dirty. Dragon Brain, the movie build is more CGI, less story, is sending America dragon crazy. Now, here is a movie only fat trolls from the suburbs could enjoy. A bunch of pale, inbred, religious just wackos running around in leather clothing hitting each other with pointy sticks. What are you talking about? It's fantastic. I can't wait till it comes out in high def so you can see every tear in his tunic as the orcs try to mate with Lord Absentinos. We wanted to speak to the star of the show, Clive Letter, but unfortunately, his publicist says his pension for DWIs has him very busy pretending to console the family of the father he killed. Instead, we've got Dragon Brain child star Christopher Tibbetts who played William of Mamory in the film. Here's a piece. Lord Absentinos, I've never even touched a girl's bottom. Your sword is enormous. That's powerful stuff. Thanks. I really learned a lot while doing this film. I learned how to be a self-absorbed and materialistic prick. And the director taught me how to roll a joint. Christopher, your life must be really exciting right now. Just starting to figure out if you like girls or boys. Oh, it is. I've got a bunch of new Vinewood friends. And I get to wear sunglasses indoors. Plus, I've started doing coke. What is your favorite memory from the set of Dragon Brain? Oh, it was great. Between takes, Arwen McBardvine, who played the wizard, he'd take me back to his trailer. He performed spells on his trousers and made them grow. He is so cute. I could just eat him up. Yeah, eat him up, because there's nothing more appetizing than a tween with a drug problem and a massive ego. What a dick. Also, we spoke with Magellan. Now, you may remember Magellan from the 80s. His European synth rock was very popular for a while, and now he's planning a comeback. Good to see you, Magellan. I used to love your records. Why, of course you did. You're our only human being. And now you're making a comeback. Yeah, Magellan wants to set the record straight. It is time for everyone to accept the facts. Magellan has had an enormous influence on the music world. Before me, the records, they didn't spin. Really? Yeah, that is super. That is true. Magellan is force of nature. Like death, I invent the wave. The wave of rock. That is why I have lace glove. Meanwhile, in comedy news, our reporter Susan Retriever spent this morning getting tested for herpes. So instead, we all had an incredibly exciting conversation with top comedian Ricky Gervais, who was performing at Split Size to rave reviews. Hey, Ricky, I got a serious question. How come people from England never laugh? There's not many people go around in England just laughing because they enjoy it, because then they'd be mental. I mean, you see some people on the street just walking around laughing at nothing, but they, they also piss in their, their pants and punch pregnant women in the face. So it's, I mean... I saw a movie about England once. What was, what was the movie? I don't know, but one man wore a leather hood and the other one cried a lot. Great. Well, at least you remember <laughs> where you saw it. Good. You do jokes about bad people. Some bad people were going to protest your show. Um, a lot of them didn't make it. A lot of them sort of stopped halfway and took their breath. And then, then some turned up with um, placards, but the placards looked tasty. So um, they were eaten. You mentioned in your act that while you're here, you've seen lots of commercials for the Relax Power X motorized scooter. Yeah, well, that's, um, that shows a lot of ingenuity where they've, um, as opposed to trying to find ways 
to um, lose weight if they found ways to uh, cut walking out. But I'd suggest, um, you know, on a motorised sort of bike, like, you've still got to do something. So what you want to do is get the pavements moving. So you can just, like, literally fall out of bed, flat on your face, and a pavement can move you to the, you know, the pizza shop. And you can... He could liquidise that. Obviously, if you really want to rule out any movement chewing, he could actually inject it straight up your anus. You've said some nasty things about our best friends, the paparazzi. If they don't stalk people like you, we wouldn't have a job. Uh, well, the paparazzi are, are doing a job, aren't they? Um, they like to hide in trees and bushes and um, take photographs up um, famous people's dresses. And um, I'm not going to judge anyone. And if, uh, you know, most people were to um, hide in a tree taking pictures of topless women on a the beach, they'd be arrested. But if you go, no, it's all right, it's for a newspaper. It's my job. They go, oh, go, go on then. Spy on all the women you like. You're not a pervert. You're working for a newspaper. What shows do you like on American TV? Um, I like uh, America's Next Top Hooker. That's good. I like um, The Serrated Edge. Uh, That's just a show selling knives. Yeah, they're all different, aren't they? You can't have too many knives. What do you think about the tragic DWI arrest of Chloe Parker? She's gone through enough, hasn't she? She's going to jail now. She's had a hard life. She's, she suffered. She suffered like Mandela. And now it's time for us to try and get her out and make her a leader. What a great interview. I just love British men. That's all we have time for. But remember, if a celeb shows their crack or smokes it, you'll find out first. WKTT. Because the battle for America begins here. WKTT 1066. We know the truth. Justice is a game. Just like the game of chicken. You've got to go full steam ahead and hope the other person runs out of energy or money first. It takes money to play the game right and get out on top. In this court, it's a world where good deeds go undone. Morality is severely punished, and random luck can destroy your life. I'm Judge Grady, and this is Just or Unjust. The excitement of a court show. You kicked me in the stomach, Your Honor. The injustice of an American courtroom. I think the wetlands are overprotected anyway. I find you a million dollars for wasting the court's time. You aptness scum. The tension of a desperate network television show. I don't care what your definition of sodomize is. I'm going to show you mine. All packed together with the incredible excitement of a game show. Do you love money? Do you? Do you? <laughs> yes. Well then, unbutton that blouse. This is Just or Unjust. Real plaintiffs and defendants in a radio court of law. Okay, let's get on with this. Welcome to my courtroom. I'm Judge Grady. Let's get some justice. Right. Today, we've got Williams Jones against Williams Jones. Case number 453. Let's get going. I've already read your opening statements. Judge Grady, my name is Lori Williams Jones. I've been married to my husband, Chuck, for two years, and all he does is play that wizard online game, Loot and Wank. He plays until two in the morning sometimes. When he comes to bed, he's all grabbing my ass and treating me like a troll, screaming, two damage, two damage. Check that ass in the air, troll. I'm about to get aggro. Can you help me, Judge? I love my husband, but I'm not an avatar. Look, you are an avatar. Let's get that straight. We all are. And the sooner people understand that, the better. The reason that your husband is in there looting and wanking and slinging his wizard junk around is because you got fat and stopped being sexy. I wouldn't even bang you. And I've done a lot of trolls in my time. Look at yourself, girl. Do something positive for yourself. Get some plastic surgery. Chuck, what have you got to say for yourself? My name is Chuck Williams Jones. I think my wife is possessed by Satan. She doesn't refill the ice tray. She hates my parents. She stopped giving me head. She spends all my money and thinks she's doing me a massive fucking favor sending out Christmas cards. I mean, come on. Give me a break. They just raised postage again. Ain't nobody giving a shit about a Christmas card. Even the ones with a picture of your fucking dog. I don't need to see a picture of your fucking dog in a Santa hat. God damn you. Can you help my wife see what's up? Hmm, interesting. And the court notices that you have a hyphenated last name. Williams hyphen Jones. 
Was that her idea? Yes, it was, Your Honor. I was born Chuck Williams. I went along with it because that's only fair, you know? I mean, I totally understand that comes from a time when women were considered property. Women are defective and misbegotten, but I don't own her. I would like to own a human being someday. I mean, like, you know, I could have me a young, nubile Filipino boy, and we could sit in my tropical hut and play games and decide who does what by playing hands-free catch the quarter. <sighs> what? Look what's happened to you. Why you gotta hyphenate? Why you gonna be half a man? She took away your manhood, she emasculated you good and proper. You got some bitch's name on half your shit. Do you pee sitting down? Um... Do you pee sitting down? Well, we're equal partners, and it's not fair that she has to take the toilet up, so I don't really mind. Equal partners? You gonna give a man a woman's last name? I'm surprised you haven't started growing tits. For the love of all that is holy in the world! You know the deal, Judge. I have to agree, or I'll never get laid again. We have an equal household, Your Honor. Equal. Equality. He wears tampons whenever I do so that we may both experience the same burden when I'm on my flow. Equality? Give me back that vote, woman. Let me guess who's at work busting his ass all day. Let me guess who makes the most money. I know. It's Chuck. It's the man. You know who has made the most money throughout history? The man. Who have been the great leaders? Men. Maybe you had Cleopatra, but Egyptians live in triangles, tetrahedrons and shit. A triangle is not manly. Who fought the best wars? Men. Who make the best murderers? Men. Who invented the plague? Men. We done it all, bitch. We run this show, and I don't give a fuck who knows it. So what if he wants to come home and spend time online with this guild and pleasure elves running around with his orky friends? Let it. Well, family and our children are the most important. Our children depend on us. We should be protecting and coddling our children, never letting them out of our sight, keeping electronic tabs on them at all times, making them paranoid and neurotic. It's our duty. Children are our future. The future? Where's your jetpack, boy? I don't have one, Your Honor. That's right, because technology is a lie sent by liberals to kill us. Apart from weapons technology, which we use to kill other people. There is no future. And you, woman, you disgust me with your liberal ideas. You ever had a three-way? No, Your Honor, I haven't. That's revolting. No, it is not. What's disgusting is the way you get yourself a dog and the dog hits puberty and suddenly you realize the dog's undercarriage is really big. Or when you watch a nature show and see two elephants mating. Or when you vomit a bit in your mouth and have to swallow it. This is insulting! This is a court of law! All you've given me is a lot of dog penis and woman hating. What is wrong with you, Judge Grady? I'm a judge. What exactly did you expect? This isn't a courtroom, it's a studio. And I'm here not to only administer justice, but also get ratings. Listen to me, I'm a judge. I'm wearing a black dress, aren't I? Do you have any idea what I'm doing up under this bench while I'm looking down at you? Ooh, I'm gonna have to retire to my quarters and think about this. While Judge Grady's back in his chambers making his decision, let's talk to a few people in the courtroom audience. Madam, what do you think? Who's in the right here? I can really empathize with Lori. Guys only care about women in revealing medieval clothing who take it up the back door. And what about you, sir? Uh, I really like the part where they talk about elephants doing it. We'll be back after this on Just or Unjust. WKTT 1066. Because the liberal media wants to give your country to an illegal immigrant. WKTT. We know the truth. Just or unjust. We're back on Just or Unjust. Judge Grady is coming back into the courtroom with his decision. Okay, all rise. Please be seated. I thought about this for a while and I've come to a decision. Will you both please approach the bench? Okay, Chuck. Face Lori. Now, Chuck, raise your hand. Repeat after me. I love you, baby. I love you, baby. And I will always remember. And I will always remember. How good this felt. How good this felt. Now smack that bitch. Ow! What the fuck? <laughs> All right, that was just for my own pleasure. I just love domestic violence. Okay, time for just or unjust. Courtroom audience names the game. The defendant and the plaintiff have to play it. How should we decide this case? First fight! Three-way! Guaranteed! Duel! 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 Wow! Seems 
pretty unanimous. That's my kind of jury. We're gonna have to go with duel or no duel. Solving things the American way. Here are your pistols. Winner gets a thousand dollars and a flight ah, to... No! I've had enough of you, stupid whore. Can you do it? Chuck, you're supposed to wait until I give you the signal. We got time to fill. We don't go to commercial for three minutes. Don't you watch TV, son? Now I got a dead planet on my courtroom floor. I'm gonna sentence you to 30 days while you think about what you did to my ratings. Let's see what our studio audience thinks. Madam, was that justice? I don't know. They came here with a minor domestic dispute about him playing too many computer games. Then, under Judge Grady's incredible jurisdiction, he ended up shooting her in the back. Yes, I'd say that was justice. Great! Join us for the next episode of Just or Unjust. Remember, it ain't justice till I say so. And today, we saw real justice practiced by real people in a real court of law. So if you go breaking the law, remember, the Justice Entertainment System may be watching. Just or Unjust! See you next time on Just or Unjust. WKTT 1066. Because the liberal media wants to give your country to an illegal immigrant. We know the truth. Conservatives finally have a real voice on the radio. It's the Richard Bastion Show. This country's going to hell. Ever since we let those damn Australians back in this country, everything has gone to shit. What the hell did we go to war with them for in the first place? Now I'll tell you why. We did it for freedom and for valuable munitions contracts. They're sick degenerate folks known as furries. They dress up in their cute little bunny suits with holes cut in them for their penises to stick out, and they pound each other's hineys, making weird-ass animal noises. Now, do you hear what public television has brought to you, America? Do you hear what's happened to the children? Hiney pounding! Saving America from itself. It's the Richard Bastion Show. All right, America, we're back. We're back here. Bastion's buddies salute. Eddies. Today on the show, we're going to talk about why America is number one. Okay, without further ado, let's do what this show is all about and hit the phone lines. You're the people that make the show. All I do is make the money and spend it on facefuls of pharmaceuticals until I go deaf. Hello, caller. I just wanted to call in and say that I absolutely love the show. Well, I absolutely love that you think that, okay? Now, you want to talk about what makes America number one, huh? We have a completely incompetent buffoon for a leader. We drive outrageously large, gas-guzzling Maibatsu monstrosities. I know. Isn't it? It's fantastic, isn't it? What we've been given uh, from our forefathers is the freedom from thought. That, for my money, is real freedom. Knowing you're always right, that's real freedom. It's, it's like life is a party that's never going to end. And, and you're not hosting that party. You're just there. So you can, you can you know, go take a, uh, take a dump on the coats. You can you know, leave your beer bottle in the toilet if you want. It doesn't matter. It's not your house. Okay, we're just here to have a good time. Now, this is unless we make a serious mistake in the election. You know, think about it. You, you can't expect someone with no backbone to police the world. And that's what these liberals don't seem to understand. It's very clear. Drinking is a sin. Laying is a sin. Fisting? You know, that's a mortal sin. And the trannies, well, don't, don't even get me started on the trannies. It's, it's science run amok, okay? It's very confusing. I'm looking at a woman. I'm talking to a woman. I see the woman's penis. Now I'm confused. I don't know what's going on. The government is, is turning into a confused transgender prostitute. I mean, it really is. You know, they don't know who to serve. You, you feel terrible afterwards. You have an overwhelming feeling that everything in your life is, is horribly wrong. Yes, it feels good while you're doing it. Yes, you're making him, her feel good. But still, it's wrong. Julie on line one. I'm totally with you, Richard. I feel like there's a full assault on our values. We need to prepare our own counter assault. I mean, I'm a good person with good values. I think we should just go after anyone who doesn't agree with me or celebrate my holidays. Uh, Julie, you're totally right. I, I mean, the minority agenda, the, uh, the, the, the midget agenda, yuck. Yuck, you know, every idiot in this country has a damn agenda. You know, what about my agenda? You know what that is? America. It is up to us 
Bastion's buddies to tell people what they can do. Because if not, they're going to live like heathens. Left to their own devices, they're, they're going to eat their own shit. You know, they, they're going to have sex with their daughters. And we got to tell them what to do and what to listen to. Otherwise, we're going to be screwed. We're, we're going to be screwed. We want order, America. Do you hear me? We want order. Order. Well, I'm ready to take the Bastion's Buddies Pledge. Okay, well then, all you gotta do right now, Julie, I need you to raise your right hand. Okay, I'm getting another Buddies Pledge. And it, it's abstinence. Okay, now what is that? It's doing nothing. Now you're good at doing nothing, right, Julie? Yeah, I'm totally frigid. That's great. That's great. Abstinence from sexual activity, it builds up hormones. Okay, listen to me. This is science. This is me using science for good. Abstinence builds up hormones. Abstaining for a long time produces a, a euphoric feeling. Okay? It, it is nature's antidepressant. Say it. I will not come on to men. Say it with me. I will not, not come, come on, on to men, men and, and sodomy is a sin even, even if I crave it. it. Okay, good. Now, I take that pledge every morning. When I wake up, I, I, I look in the mirror, okay? You know, after I get done doing my facial scrub and then, you know, some uh, I, I, I put some toner on my face. Uh, but after that, I say that pledge. It's great for strength and purity of our nation. There are no better ways to serve your country apart from one. And it involves taking out museums and inappropriate health facilities. If, if we're going to stay pure out there and focus on turning this country into an aggressive and limited access paradise, then listeners... You're going to need to start by avoiding uh, uh, romance novels, um, any machinery that vibrates, uh, hand soap, baby oil, baby soap, hand oil, the Internet, okay? Jumper cables, uh, 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 you know, uh, what, what are the trampolines, all right? Trampolines, you get, you get a, a, a young lady on a trampoline and her boobs start bouncing or, or you get a, a well-endowed man and his package is bouncing all over. You're going to start thinking, well, there's more to life than shutting up. And, and that's not what is true. It's that simple. Next caller. What's wrong with this country? We don't have enough mascots. You know, okay, that is, now that is true. This is so true. Kids, the children of America, need to look up to people like like Derek the Dodo, and, and, and not some not some liberal puppet uh, on public television teaching you how to count. Okay, you know, there's only three numbers I care about, and that is three, two, one, launch. All right, and that is the that is what I like to hear right before we send a missile cock in some asshole country's mouth. All right. Now, if I, if I need my kids to, to be taught tolerance, you know, sometimes, which is a dirty word in my household, tolerance, but I'll, I'll tolerate them fighting, okay? That is what I'll tolerate. I, I don't need them uh, to learn about life from, from, from puppets, okay? You don't learn anything from anybody that likes having a hand put up their ass, all right? The only puppet I like is the president. I, I have a great idea, and I have tried it at home at work. I have four wonderful darling babies. I have four babies? Well, you hear that, America? Another of Bastion's buddies making little soldiers to fight this culture war. That's great. My babies are cats. Wait, wait cats? I have named them after... Patriarchal influences. I'm drawing my inspiration from my kitties. Oh, okay, nobody, nobody wants to hear about your stupid, useless pussies. God, I, I, you know what has happened to radio? I mean, to this city, to to this world. I, I you know I cannot wait to be judged because I'm gonna be okay. I already know that. I know that because I have secrets that I keep within me. Okay, and if you keep them bottled inside of you, then you get to release them in heaven. Because right now on this earth, my secrets are the only thing that keep me on heaven's path. Now, most of you are, are you're, a lot of you are screwed, and, and rightfully so. Okay, we've gotten into the, into the PC mode of like, you know, well, we're all the same, we're all equal, man. Hey, women can do anything men can do. You know, even have Adam's apples. Yeah, you know, right? Yeah, sure. BS, okay? I don't shop uncontrollably, okay? If I bleed for seven days, I die. Okay? You know, I can drive a car for more than 30 minutes without hitting something. Okay, that's the difference. Next caller. First of all, I'd just like to say I love this show. You know, it's, it's great. You're doing a good job for this city. Thank you. Thank you. I agree completely. Get to the point. Where the hell do these liberal fascists get off trying to censor pornography? Okay, now, now, okay. now listen. 
put your head up to your radio so I can vibrate some sense into that thick head of yours. We need to know who is reading and watching what in order to keep the terrorists out and protect our, our morality. That's all that's going on. I mean, mood-altering candles lead to heavy petting, okay? Don't pet me. I, I don't want to be pet, all right? I, I'm not a cat, all right? Now, you know what I, you know what I say? We're not even supposed to be having sex. I, no, keep it out of my butt, all right? With the nonsense uh, 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 on TV in this country, like, uh, you know, like that liberal, Jeremy St. Ives, uh, filling women's heads with you know, the, all these irrational expectations about masculinity, you know, we're, we're all going to be in trouble. Li you know, here, listen, my wife has never had one of those uh, uh, so-called female orgasms, and she's very... Very, very happy. You know, she works out a couple times a day with her trainer, uh, and, and she's she's getting very, very good at tennis. Okay, now we have our faith. That's where our orgasms come from. That's where we get off from praying. All right, this life is meant to be shit, so that the next one is good. You gotta have your valleys to appreciate the peaks. It, you know, it's like an orgy with virgins. You know, I mean, it sounds like a good idea. Then you get in there and you're kind of like, no, don't put that there. Put that. You know. Anyway, you get my point. You know, I'm a man who believes in the American dream. I, I, I really do. And that dream is, I'm in charge. And if you don't like what I'm saying, then I'm gonna make a wise crack and, and drop a bomb on you. That's it. That for me is the is is the American can dream, okay, and then maybe get uh, a country artist to sing a song about it and then have me walking around in slow motion. That, that's the fully realized dream. You know, then you can maybe make a movie about me doing that and we can do action figurines and then myself making a movie about blowing the shit out of you while I make a wise crack. Yeah, I mean, the, the idea, the dream is endless, truly, and that's the beauty of America is I'm allowed to dream. That's the dream. Don't complain to me that, that you come over here and that all you get are the janitor jobs. Okay? Don't complain to me about that. Just just pick up my shit and walk out of the room. Don't stand in here awkwardly. Don't try to make eye contact with me. Okay? Don't 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 talk to me. Don't ask about the pictures of my kids. Okay? America we don't want to pick up our trash. Okay? We don't want to do that and, and we don't want to sweat. All right, now we'll be right we'll be right here in the air conditioning watching the news and stewing over people like you who who are trying to break into our houses and tr and trust me, you come into my house, buddy, you know there's going to be a, a, you're going to be in uh, in store for a, a little double barrel surprise, okay? I will take you and I will shoot a hole in you and then I will torture you and your family for freedom. That's about all the time we have. Remember Bastion's buddies. We are right. We will see you next time on The Richard Bastion Show. WKTT 1066. Because now that the Cold War is over, it's time to fight with ourselves. From Pinewood to Liberty City, if a celeb shits, eats, or snorts it, Fizz is there. Hi, welcome to this edition of Fizz. The entertainment and celebrity scene is buzzing like an overdose celebutant. Jane Labrador, and I'm joined as ever by our celebrity experts, Marcel Lemieux. Jane, it's a celebtabulous week. I have got so much dirt to share. Woo! And Jeff Ron James, who is here to make fun of all the people we can. What's up, people? Liberty City's entertainment scene has been hotter than a Baghdad barbecue. We've had a couple of big name casualties on Star Junction. Gloria Unsworth was singing her menopause blues away in the musical Middle Age until she had a hot flash when it was canceled this week. That's right, Jane. The show has failed to reach 45. Performances, that is. <laughs> Who wants to hear anything about the horrors of aging? Listen to this. I'm 40 and nobody wants to fuck me. Lasagna belly and ass kind of lumpy. You know the worst part is when she showed her flabby bat wings on the stage. Oh, that's revolting. I hate life without an airbrush. Get the... Pick your face up. It's something called surgery. Nip tuck. Get some work done on your funky fat thighs. This is the entertainment industry. Also, tourists in Liberty 
City are complaining about indecent performances at a local night spot. The Perestroika Club in Hove Beach is home to a wide range of vaudeville performances and has outraged patrons with both the quality and violent content of its acts. Oh, these rotten, dirty Ruskies. They're just taking over the entertainment industry in this town. First the strippers, smelling like vodka, and now they want the theater. Thank God we still have Fleet Week. You do realize you're a stereotype. I am not. I am an individual. There's no other entertainment commentator who's camp, sassy, and bitchy. Leave me alone has been... Boys, please. Magicians, singers, jugglers, and more are part of the vaudeville performances at the Perestroika Club. The master of ceremonies had this to say. We have best entertainment in the whole of the city. You don't like real cabaret entertainment? Don't come. You offended by men throwing knives at ex-girlfriends? Don't come. Some nights we have cold, other nights trash a woman drink too much, sings about her stepfather and sex change. It's a good time. Juggling, spousal abuse, magic, people bursting into song, sex changes. Sounds just like a night at my parents' house. I would love to get paid to throw knives at bitches. I would be a bitch knife act throwing motherfucker. And more on the terrible tragedy. Ah, that's right. We haven't had a paparazzi beaver shot for weeks. It's a catastrophe for our ratings. Thank God. If I have to see Jill Van Krastenberg's chapped and cracked chimp lips on the internet one more time, I'll be back in therapy. Actually, no. What we're talking about is the death of actor Wayne Tierson, who died a few weeks ago, but whose death has got great ratings and web hits. Oh, yes. Tierson was found dead in a Las Venturas brothel, and Vinewood is struggling to come to terms with their loss. Shock. Morning. This is a tragic blow to the entertainment industry, and one we here at Fizz are determined to help stretch out. Aw, there, there. It's terrible. I, I feel your pain. A 20-year-old millionaire dying of too many lap dances and too many drugs. It's a real tragedy. <laughs> well, you're right. And he did dress like shit. Ah, uh, see? That's right. Celebrities deserve to die for being better than us. That's the subtext of this entire show. And some of the biggest names in comedy are coming to Liberty City. Cat Williams is here to do stand-up at the Split Sides Club. But he was also part of a protest in Middle Park against injustice. I spoke with him earlier. <laughs> you out here protesting? Let me explain something to you. We are here to tell the world that there's a lot of injustice going on. Sick people, old people, people that want to watch TV. We're being oppressed. How are you being oppressed? How am I being? Do you know how much it costs to get an ounce of good weed in Liberty City? Motherfuckers want $500. How the fuck am I supposed to feed my kids and order pay-per-view wrestling and get a sandwich when weed costs that goddamn much? And half of it's just too motherfucking strong anyway. Names like White Widow, Northern Lights, AK-47. I'm not trying to order a gang. I'm trying to order some regular weed. You're not here to protest against the pharmaceutical companies taking advantage? Hell no. Nah. I love pharmaceutical companies. I wish I had a pharmaceutical company. I wish I was a pharmaceutical company. All kids should be on some sort of pharmaceuticals. Something to keep them calm and inside where they belong. Not out fucking with my rider stealing my shit. Comedian Cat Williams. Groundbreaking illusionist Brian Vesuvius wowed audiences recently when he made his jump disappear between his legs. I could do that. See? Look, I'm a woman. It's easy. You just tuck in. Please, put that little guy away. Hug. Now, Vesuvius is discussing his next big project, a stunt in which he plans to shrink his head to half its size. I like a little head, usually after dinner. Stop doing that, would you? Vesuvius will perform his cranial reduction live in space, or so he claims. We will stay with this story. Meanwhile, we spoke to nightclub impresario Larissa Slalom about her newest Algonquin venture. It's called Anna. It's going to be the hottest club in town. Super VIP. All the celebrities, you'll never get in. We've got a gold scale at the entrance. If you wait too much, you can't come in. It's very chic. And there's a diamond-encrusted toilet right by the entrance. So you can purge till you hit the magic weight. And then the bouncer lets you in. Right, Lamont? That's right. Get the boffin, bitches. People will do anything to get in our club. They're lying by being a celebrity or a celebrity stepkid. They're 
offer you sex, drugs, and money? Now it's down to the cold, hard facts. How much do you weigh? Platinum vomitoriums are very now. Well, of course, it's a bit of a joke. We just want people to have a good time in a safe environment. I have to say that, or they'll shut me down again. Hey, anybody have a line? Oh, yeah, Tony Prince is a loser. Fantastic. Oh, I can't wait to stop by. That's about all we have to We'll stay on top of the celeb, stalking them till they snap. And when they do, you'll hear about it first on Fizz. Fizz! In this court, I am the law. I'm Judge Grady. And this is Just or Unjust. The scripted drama of a court show. But I'm the mother of his son. That doesn't mean he can't get some on the side. The injustice of an American courtroom. Somebody give me head and I'll wave the charge. The tension of a desperate network trying to stave off its own self-imposed death rattle by making a mockery of our justice system. But he put me in a wheelchair and I've got to save the world in the next half hour, including commercials. I'm tired of your fake sob stories. How am I supposed to believe you lost your legs? Now we'll on out of here, Lieutenant, before I push you down the stairs myself. All packed together with the incredible excitement of a game show. Okay, you have 10 seconds to tell the truth or you'll be set on fire. This isn't fair! <laughs> Welcome to American Justice, lady. <laughs> this is Just or Unjust with Judge Grady. It's the hard world of radio justice. Real plaintiffs and defendants in a radio court of law. Today, we've got Allen versus Davis, case 465. Okay, I read your opening statements. Let's get going. Before me is LeVar Davis and Angela Allen. You two used to be in a relationship. And Miss Allen is suing you for $5,000 to fix damages to her car you did with a baseball bat? Mr. Davis, can you explain yourself? Your Honor, that female is crazy. Yeah, yeah. Sounds like the truth to me. Court is adjourned. Hey! You're not even going to hear my side of it? Oh, well, shit. We got some time to kill. Why not? Approach the bench, Miss Allen. Okay, yes, Your Honor. Now sit on my lap. Um, okay. There, there. Isn't that better? Now tell me what happened to you, baby, while I stroke your back. Well, I was together with LeVar for a year, and he started acting real crazy. Hey, what are you doing? Oh, shh, woman, woman, shh. Calm down. I'm soothing you. It's part of the legal process. Now, Mr. Davis. Yes, Judge Grady. I mean, we were together for a while. She was fine. She carries herself well. She's got big uh uh's, if you know what I mean. She sure does. I'm feeling them right now. <gasps> Hold still, girl. But she's evil and a cheater. She scratched my brand new truck. I needed a truck because I'm an accountant. Is that so? You scratched his truck? His new accountancy truck? The kind of truck a man who works in an office buys so he can feel like a man again? What kind of woman scratches a man's truck? That's his manhood you're scratching. The very essence of his masculinity. He sits outside my house all times of the night. He's out there in the morning watching me. I go to the store, he's peering at me through sprunk bottles on aisle seven. I'm not a stalker, Your Honor. Not after my last conviction. I'm just trying to get some information. These are fact-finding missions. What kind of information? Uh, like who she's screwing so I can kill him. You see, Your Honor? He's psychotic. He's... Hey, what are you touch... Why are you touching my hair? It sure is lovely. So tell me, Mr. Davis, what did you do then? Well, I was really mad about my truck, so I went to my quiet place after my yoga class, meditated, deep breathing, and then I kind of accidentally beat all the windows out of her car with a baseball bat, peed in the front seat, slashed the tires, and took a dump in the air filter. You shit in the air filter? Ah! <laughs> Give it up, my man. That's cold. Yeah, so every time she turns on the air conditioner, her car smells like my shit. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's ingenuity right there. That's what got us out of the primordial soup and into luxury condos with plasma TVs and robotic dogs. Good going. I like your style. Now, see, girl, that's why you are the undisputed week of sex and we are humiliating you on the radio. Name one woman wrestler who's any good. Name the first woman on the moon. Ah, trick question. Name one woman pro football player. How many women wrote Shakespeare's plays? Answer me. You can. And you are going to have to go through life as the week of sex. I mean, tell me, girl, did you deserve all this? No, I mean, he owes me. 
He's got a good job, and I had his child. You two have a baby? Yes, Your Honor, we did, but I tried to do the right thing and push her down the stairs, like you recommended on one of your shows. But she had it anyway, and then I tried to sell it on the Internet. Good deal. Miss Allen? He acted like he isn't the father. I had to do everything on my own. I didn't sleep for six months. You're a terrible mother. I can tell by listening to you. But I love my son. When I met her, I was 24. She said she was 23, but she was really 13. No, I didn't. I told you I was 13. Well, they sound alike. You told me it was okay because you were from South Carolina. How do I know it's my baby anyhow? The DNA test says so. What is DNA? I've never seen it, and I'm an accountant. How are you going to believe in something you can't see? I can't see the wind. Ain't that the truth? I ain't never seen DNA or stem cell. Or a law degree, for that matter. I'm going to have to retire to my quarters and think about this. Judge Grady has taken Miss Allen back to his quarters to discuss his decision. Let's talk to a few people in the courtroom audience. Sir, what do you think? Who's in the right here? He really has a lot of explaining to do. He pushed her down the stairs. That's no way to get rid of a girlfriend. And what about you, ma'am? I'm going to try that thing with the air filter. We'll be back after this on Just or Unjust. WKTT. Because I love my country, and if you don't, fuck you and your fat wife. WKTT 1066. Talk radio for people who are always right. We're back on Just or Unjust with a case of the scratch truck and the underage fuck. Judge Grady is back in the courtroom with his decision. Okay, all rise. Please be seated. Now rise again. Now get down. Hear me. Hear me. Yeah, that's right. This portion of Just or Unjust is brought to you by America's Next Top Hooker on CNT. Okay, you know how this works. Courtroom audience names the game. The defendant and the plaintiff have to play it. How should we decide this case? Make them eat glass! Put a box of beans on their head! Cannibalism! Let us eat them both! Gladiator cage! Gladiator cage! Gladiator cage! Gladiator cage! Okay, we haven't had this one in a while. Both of you, step into the cage. Okay, on the floor, you will find a sword, a mace, a flail, a hammer, and two tridents. Choose your weapon. Okay, now are you ready? Yes. Release the lion. Hey. What the fuck? <laughs> That'll teach you to screw at the man's truck. <laughs> Damn! The lion ripped off her arm. Yeah, dumb bitch, that's what you get. <laughs> oh, he's coming after you, Mr. Davis. No, no, nice. No. By the throat. That's what you get for hooking up with a young girl and stalking her in the supermarket. Let this be a lesson to you all. Two wrongs don't make a right. Damn. I love justice. What did we learn today? We learned that passion can be your undoing. That sensationalist shows like this, celebrity worship, ignoring politics, it feels good. Like I just wake up each morning and wrap my big hands around the American dream and choke the life out of it. Now, studio audience, when the line is done, you guys can go in and eat the rest. Let's see what our studio audience thinks. Sir, was that justice? Sure was. I mean, man, when a couple don't get on, rather than a messy separation, what Judge Grady gave us today was two people being messily separated by lions. That shit was dope. And you, madam? Wow, I knew it. Tastes just like chicken. Great. Just or unjust. See you next time on Just or Unjust. WKTT, because in the war on terror, it's kill or be killed. WKTT 1066. The number one conservative talk show in America. He's America's anchorman. The conservative captain of the good ship Freedom Isn't Free, proving we can shout down any dissenting voices. It's the Richard Bastion Show. I think more and more people need to stop breastfeeding in public. Absolutely. Uh, you know, and breasts are filthy. Cover them up, okay? Don't make me pull out my boot knife and give you a mastectomy. America is too concerned with birth control. We need to be making babies. We need to catch up with the 
I'm with you. You know, we've got to monitor people's email. we got to outlaw all the wrong religions, okay? Because that way we can finally be free in this country. This is the continued pussification of America. It's not okay for men to be hugging each other and crying and talking about their feelings. You know what? I disagree. I, I say feel, but feel with your fists, all right? Right there, the hammers that God gave you on the end of your arms, okay? Are you with me, Bastion's buddies? And now, here's the man himself, Richard Bastion. All right, thanks for joining me, Bastion buddies, here and on 1,400 radio stations worldwide. Welcome to the show. Now, today we're talking about family values on the program, and I'll tell you right now, I'm married to two women. My wife, my lovely, lovely wife with her beautiful hair and pretty face, the second person I'm married to, America. Now, here's my thing. I won't go down south on either. Why? Because it does not help with populating this great country with real Americans. It's about pleasure, not procreation, and that is pointless. Okay, now, if you can't alliterate a real idea, it's too complicated, and I will not blind you with science. Now, now I know why bigamy is illegal in most states. It, it, you know, it's tough. It's tough serving two women. In my line of work, you need to be able to sing the national anthem or a, uh, a spiritual show tune with equal amounts of enthusiasm. But remember, I ain't just whistling Dixie, because nobody, nobody likes a whistler or a whistleblower. You know, it's like when uh, you see when you see two people kiss in public, especially ugly people. Good, good Lord, keep it to yourself, folks. Okay, put the tongues back in their bags. I don't want to see it. You know, you, you keep traditional values, traditions. There are the, there aren't too many of them around anymore. So we better fight for the few we got left. All right, let me tell you, I love my country. I, I would love to tongue kiss the Statue of Happiness. You know, just reach my hand underneath that big smock she's wearing and, and just give her a nice freedom squeeze. Let's go to the phones. You're through to me, Richard Bastion. Hi, Ricky. I'm a Bastion buddy. I've got a problem with what this country's become. Nobody gives a shit about holidays anymore. On Memorial Day, they don't remember the troops. They're shit-faced on pills and vodka at a sofa sale at the mall. And July 4th, they just want to get drunk for three days straight and blow shit up. What's wrong with slaughtering the British like we used to? What are you talking about? There, there are a lot of great traditions left, like uh, like uh, you know, you know, hating open-minded liberals and, and spreading unsubstantiated slurs about them, okay? Now, now, now on Independence Day, you know, I like to find a, a nice Indian casino and celebrate by trying to steal their shit again. That's what I'm into. Traditional values. Kim, on line two. You know what really concerns me about America? The educational system. First of all, the liberals are making our children learn things like geography. Who cares where the terrorists come from? If our children know about other countries, there's less time spent teaching them about American superiority. You don't need geography to kill terrorists. Uh, if I had all the time in the world that I've wasted on explaining things to women. Here, let me, let me explain something to you, all right? Public education is another lie. Okay, you see it in the bunk they're teaching is science. Now, science is good when it teaches you how to turn a million ungrateful foreigners into glass. That I'm, that, that I'm giving a thumbs up to, okay? That's a great discovery. But don't tell me that anything that I do causes a problem. I don't want to hear that, because you're the problem. You know why? Because this is the land of the free, not the land of the free lunches for minorities, okay? I don't care if they are the ones serving it. They shouldn't get it for free. <laughs> Okay, we've got a live terror sighting. Hello, you're on uh, the Richard Bastion Show. Yeah, I, I'm on the train, and I, I see a guy who's a terrorist. This guy's really suspicious. Okay, good. good. Well, uh, what's he doing? He's sitting there reading some religious shit. Okay, now how can you, how can you tell this shit's religious? What, what is it? What's going on with it? I'm sure it is. It's in a different fucking language. It's Spanish or something. Well, that, that, that is a sure sign. Okay, now what you're sitting across from right there is Al Conqueso. They're Spanish terrorists, the worst kind. Okay, they're, they're already infiltrated into all our shitty jobs. You know, you, you see them outside, uh, you know, at various hardware stores waiting to just the next strike, okay? They're the most dangerous of all. I cannot stress that enough. Now, now you know what you have to do, don't you? I sure do. I'm on 24-7. We're on a train. There's kids everywhere. Time to let fly with some bullets and see what this bastard is all about. Dude, thanks a lot, Richard. Eat lead, you Alcone queso, motherfucker. That's great. Perfect. Now that, that is a true American. You know, I just want to give that man a heart stopper from Burger Shot, shove a slice of apple pie up his ass, and salute that guy. That son of a gun loves America. You see, Bastion's buddies, we're everywhere, and we're all about keeping this country safe. Next caller. You're always going on and on about Homeland Security and executing slow people, but I mean, I don't really care about the issues. 
I've got a lot of guns and a pretty impressive penis. Well, you know, I, uh, you know, I think that's all you really need. You know, that's the dream the liberal media is taking away from us. Now, now you got to trust me here. I, I've been fined a lot for talking about the size of my penis. I, I mean, it, it is closely shaped to a, a tennis ball container. I, I'm just going to leave it at that. All right. Now, I, now you, you take the Liberty Tree. Now, this is a newspaper giving aid to terrorists by reporting on unconstitutional activities by the government. OK, I don't want to know what the government's doing. They're doing it right. That's all I need to know. They're doing it and they're doing it right. Sometimes you have to go outside the law to catch a bad guy. OK, you see it in movies all the time. What further proof do you need? Go on the phones. Yeah, um, I want to talk about that guy's penis. It sounds awesome. No, 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 no. Next caller. Hey, this is Mike Meeples, and I'll tell you what's wrong with America, man. Stupid people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is a problem. In old America, the, the America I fell in love with, we dealt with stupid people very discreetly. Okay. Now, now I don't know if it's if it's something in the water or or the lack of separate water fountains, uh, but it's like a plague has taken over. I mean, I've you know I've had it with the homosexual agenda. No, thank you. Leave us the hell alone. And with that, we're out of time. We'll see you next time on the Richard Bastian Show. Where do men go for straight talk about their health? Colonics are so relaxing, even sensual. From Jeremy St. Ives, in a place no women are allowed. That's right. The Men's Room with Baz and Jeremy, only on Weasel. WKTT, the most patriotic news source in America. W